All right, so I'm almost done with the internal compositing with the flower. You see all these extra little ones I added. And then I think I'm going to do one more internal composite. Take a big chunk here. Duplicate it. Move it over here. So the head's always the focal point, right? Push it down. Warp it a little bit. Don't look, make it look too copy pasty. And then erase away from in front of it. Oops. And once, if I use a really soft edge, like a hardness of like 13, make it a little bit bigger, I can start to transition it internally too. Now this is a really nice trick I like in Photoshop. I call it ghosting. There's no particular term for it. It's a professional term that I know. But what you do is you take um, a 0% hardness brush at 100% opacity, but you make the size really large. And then you kind of erase um, around what you want to erase instead of on top of what you want to erase. And it will just kind of bite away at it like you're blowing out candles or something. So let's see, where can I show that to you? So if I wanted to slowly transition this flower away, or for instance, right here is a good place. I might want to slowly transition this away. I use a 100% opacity eraser at 0% hardness, pretty large, the larger the better. Then I erase away around what I want to transition. This is really good for, for soft edges. See, and it just kind of bites away at it very slowly. Even though it's 100% opacity, it's like a perfect transition. The key is not to do this, though. You have to go at the outside of it. It's like your eraser tool is a little sun that's giving off radiation that erodes edges. Slowly, slowly. All right, what I'm going to do now is take all of these layer 19 there are 18 copies, which are all the different internal compositings I did, and then merge them together, Command E. So that they're all on one layer together. And what's nice about that is then I can really work with it. And I can even do little goofy things like take this whole chunk now that's combined of multiple internal composite layers, duplicate that, and then flip it, the duplicate, set it down over here, set it back, give him a little hat, and then warp it, change it. So it makes more sense. And then I think I just want to get rid of this fur back here. Use my big eraser and just bite away. And then I use my sharp eraser. Not super sharp, but around 50%. Smaller, still 100%. And now I have new external edges of these flowers new internal composite flower to build and cut out. And when I cut it out, I am customizing it. I'm making it my own vision. Not so much based on my sketch anymore as based on what I think would look, would look best. So I'm getting to know my creature through this. 
what it can handle, what it can't handle. All right, so now, for the most part, we're done. I hit Command S, and I say Save, and it looks fine. It looks like a good collage. But now we do the finishing work. And the finishing work is playing with um, the dodging and burning. It's playing with something called clone stamp and bringing textures to blend better. So some of the places I need that, like this, is kind of a mess. This is where I could bring more internal composites of flowers, but it's just kind of muddy and, and meh. These transitions into the legs, they're fine, but they're just, it's not messy enough. It's not believable yet. This is too light. The shadows underneath these flowers aren't believable. There are no shadows underneath them and the, the hide's too, too bright. So first thing I can do is just use the move tool, select the layers, right, that matter, and then just do dodge and burn selectively. I've already adjusted the, um, the levels and the color balance on the different layers to match where I want. And now I'm going to use dodge and burn with 0% hardness, big soft brush at a low exposure, and just the mid-tones, I'm going to darken the hide under where these flowers are resting, right? That will help them set down. I'll also darken between the legs and underneath, you know, where this is hitting the ground. Kind of an ombre effect. And I can make it look kind of dingier. Around where there's already shadows, right? Just, just deepening the mid-tones. And then if I, if I get brave, I can even try burning the shadows just a tiny bit. You don't want to push it too hard because it will go to black very easily. And then if needed, you cut it out again. If you think there's just too much somewhere, like here. I don't want all that. And I have another layer to erase behind that. And if I think that's too sharp, I can use my eraser, I can soften it. And I can take it out a little bit by hand instead of just using the lasso for everything. Okay, so that dodging and burning helped. It gets tricky when you have multiple different layers. So now I'm going to keep burning, but I have to find the right layers to burn. And I want to get under the flowers on the hide here, and at the top. And I want to get the neck. I want to burn that, deepening the contrast. And if too much color gets added in or too much color gets taken away, you might want to use the sponge tool. So I'm getting a little too much color in the hide now. Because as you burn, you'll keep saturating the color. But then I can go to the sponge and desaturate selectively. And then knock that back down towards gray. You can also use the sponge to, to saturate if you've lost color. Okay, now I'm looking at the feet and I need to burn around them. And I'm going to burn the highlights, the edges, up the wrong layer. There we go. Because there shouldn't be highlights around the edges if they're around fur. So lighting's first before we start doing transitions. And I can burn the feet a little bit. They're getting a lot of light. Doesn't make a ton of sense. See, I want to dodge the flowers on this side. They should be catching more light. Oh, you want to be careful dodging highlights because it goes to white very quickly. So again, mid-tones is always what's safe. There we go, that's better. 
Anything else I want to dodge? Probably that. Flowers on the back. Yeah, so just working between your layers, dodging and burning, getting as much dimension and s solid form as you can. Whoops. But we have history. Okay. And now just by dodging and burning that seam, this looks better transitioning into the head. Okay, now this is the test. I take all my different layers. I can delete the layers I'm not using. And I have a lot more than five, right? Because the head itself is over five layers. And then I'm going to take this background gray and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to say edit fill with black. Aha! And it shows me I have a big thing I haven't cleaned up. And it's just on a layer, and I can just delete it. <laughs> so this helps me see any debris I have. And I've been doing this for a while, so I'm, I'm pretty good at cleaning up my mistakes. But there is something, like there's that little white edge there that I would never find otherwise. So this helps me find it, so that I can go in and clean it up. So sometimes you can't see everything on middle gray. And then sometimes you can't see everything on black. So once it's nice and cleaned up and you see it on black and the lighting makes sense, with the black around it, like let's say you have a dark landscape, it makes me think I need more shadow still here. So what I'm going to do is burn some more. But this time I'm going to burn the mid-tones. Maybe burn some of the highlights. Yeah, that's helping. And what happens when you put something in shadow? Well, it's going to be less saturated, not more saturated. So then I'm going to go back in with that handy dandy sponge tool. Take that color down a bit. I think that makes it look too dull. I can go back and burn it some more. Not the highlights though this time, the mid-tones. And we can overdo it very easily. So you always want to just kind of see what you had before. That's where it was what it is. Maybe I want something little in between. And then sponge it. And it's really quick burn some of those shadows to give it that depth. Okay. So then the next trick is to duplicate that black background layer, Command J, and then say Edit Fill with White. Now this is the true test of versatility for your digital artwork. If it looks good on white, black, and gray as a background, then it's going to look good on most t-shirts, on most websites, on most um, composites, most posters. But notice what white shows me. It shows me that I have these extremely hard edges that don't really feel furry, right? Because they're just cut out with a lasso. The flowers are nice and soft because I use the refine edge. But that that's a little false looking. So this is this is how I solved that. 